Aeroflot Flight 811 was a scheduled Soviet domestic passenger flight from Komsomolsh on Amur to Blagoveshensk that collided midair on 24 August 1981 with a Tupolev Tu-16K strategic bomber over Zavotinsky district in Amur Oblast, Russian SFSR, Soviet Union now Russia. The collision between Aeroflot's Antonov N24 RV and Tupolev Tu-16K occurred at an altitude of 5,220 meters (17,130 feet), killing 37 people on both aircraft. The sole survivor, 20-year-old passenger Larissa Savitskaya from Antonov N24 RV, was rescued on the third day after the accident. Topic. Background and collision Antonov and 24 RV departed from Komsomolsh on Amur at 14.56 local time, after a four-hour delay due to weather conditions. The crew consisted of first pilot Alexander Mergorodsky, co-pilot Valery Shevelev, navigating officer Fedozy Krizanovsky, flight engineer Nikolai Dmitriev and air hostess Galina Borisova. Among the passengers was one child. Larissa Savitskaya and her husband Vladimir were returning from their honeymoon. The flight dispatcher was informed that the local airspace would be traversed by military aircraft at an altitudes of 4,200 to 4,500 meters (13,800 to 14,800 feet). On the same day, at 1600 and 1601 local time, two Tupolev Tu-16K left Zavotinsk Air Base for weather reconnaissance. At 1621 local time, one of them, serial number 6203106, collided with the Aeroflot and 24 RV, 70 kilometers east of Zavotinsk Air Base. The collision occurred in good lighting conditions, with a visibility of over 10 kilometers. Savitskaya was sound asleep at that moment. The 216K raised off the N24 RV's roof and severed both wings. The temperature inside an 24 RV's cabin dropped from 25 degrees Celsius (77 degrees Fahrenheit) to minus 30 degrees Celsius (minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit). Both aircraft disintegrated and fell on taiga terrain. The fragments of Antonov and 24 RV were scattered in a southwestern direction, 1,020 meters from the collision point, on a 2,500 h 900 meters area. The 216K exploded after the ground impact. Its fragments were scattered approximately 2000 meters from the collision point. Savitskaya was conscious during the fall, which lasted 8 minutes. She survived partly because the 4H3 meters aircraft fragment she was in started to glide and landed on a soft, swampy glade. Savitskaya also pushed against the seat with her hands and feet, perhaps hoping to absorb the blow. In her own words, the impact with the ground, however, knocked her temporarily unconscious. She sustained a concussion, a broken arm and rib and some spinal injuries. Investigation <inaudible> 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 The investigation concluded that the flight operations director at Zavotinsk Air Base did not use radar assistance to track the Tupolevs, which became the direct cause of the accident. Additionally, there was a poor coordination between the local civilian and military air traffic control due to flawed air traffic regulations. Military prosecutors placed the responsibility for the accident on the pilots of both aircraft. Aftermath The first reports about the accident in the Soviet press were censored, saying Savitskaya had crashed in a homemade glider. Savitskaya was warned by the KGB not to reveal the accident to the public. She spoke openly about the accident for the first time on of January 2001 in Moscow. Savitskaya was paid 75 Soviet rubles compensation by Aeroflot. Topic. See also List of sole survivors of airline accidents or incidents Vesna Volovi